Hello everyone, this is Alex from 3D and CNC.com, and today we're going to convert a regular Lulzbot V2 single extruder head into a Flexi Struder V2 head. So first things first, you have to print the new Flexi Struder body. You can either scour Lulzbot's development files for it, or just download it from the link I provided in the description of this video. Now let's remove our existing V2 extruder from our TAS5 machine. Start by removing the filament from the extruder, and then turn the machine off. For safety, it's best to unplug it from the wall as well. Also give it some time to discharge any capacitors. Next, let's remove the extruder head by unplugging its wiring harness and unscrewing the single screw that's holding the extruder to the extruder carriage. After that, we can remove the extruder from the machine. There's some support material in place that needs to be removed from the flexi extruder body that we printed. Make sure that you take that out with some pliers or similar. I find that sometimes the support material gets removed via adhesion when the piece is pulled from the print bed. If that's the case, this material will have already been removed. For the next step, we need three metric drill bits, 8mm, 6.5mm, and 3.5mm. Firstly, using the 6.5mm drill bit, drill vertically through the flexi extruder body as shown. This creates the pathway we need for the PTFE tube, also known as Teflon tube, to guide the filament smoothly to the hot end. If you need a piece of this Teflon tube, you can buy it in small quantities from my other business, www.canadianmetric.com. Canadian Metric, for all your small quantity metric screw needs. A great resource for 3D printing and CNC projects. <clears throat> Cut the PTFE tubing so it's just a bit longer than the Flexi Struder body. Moving on, you can put the PTFE tube in a number of ways. Lulzbot recommends utilizing a screwdriver to guide the tube into the hole, but I've found that some hand soap and some hands can also get the job done easily. Make sure that the Teflon tube is as flush as possible with the bottom of the flexi extruder. Now, utilizing the 3.5mm drill bit, drill through the Teflon tube. This creates the correct sized hole to guide the filament. Now you can trim the top of the PTFE tube. You can use box cutters or similar if you want to get it nice and flush, but I just use scissors. Finally, using our 8mm drill bit, we drill from the back side of the piece through to the front, straight through the PTFE tubing. This creates a gap for our hob bolt to grab onto the filament. Make sure that the hole is fairly clean. Now that we have completed the flex extruder body, let's start transferring the stock extruder's hardware over to it. Begin by removing the two M3 screws that hold the fan. Next, remove the two M5 bolts that hold pretty much everything together. Now, loosen the stepper motor screws that hold the stepper motor to the extruder body. You might have to rotate the large extruder gear to gain access to the last stepper motor screw. After that's done, remove the motor. Remove the large nut on the front of the stock V2 extruder by holding it with a wrench and spinning the large extruder wheel. Note how the hobbed bolt lines up with the filament feed tube on our regular extruder. We need to make sure that when we move this hardware to our flex extruder that the hobbed bolt lines up properly like this. As you can see, in this case by simply swapping the hardware over to the flex extruder, the hobbed bolt does not line up properly. Luckily, that's not a big problem. We'll simply add an extra washer to shim the hob bolt into the correct position. As you can see, the hob bolt now lines up perfectly. Next, let's attach the motor to the flexi extruder. It's also important to note the orientation of the motor, which I actually have incorrect here. Make sure the black shrink wrap cable is up, not on the side as shown here. Ah, that's better. If you had to shim your hob bolt like I did, your small extruder gear will have to be loosened and moved in order to mesh with the large extruder gear properly. Now screw in the motor mount screws. It's a good idea to push the motor towards the large extruder gear while screwing in the screws to ensure a good tight mesh between the extruder gears. If you haven't yet, screw the large nut to the front of the flex extruder. Don't forget to put its washer on first. Now let's put it all back together with the extruder carriage. 
slide the metal hot end into its mounting plate. Then, sandwich everything with the flex extruder. Now, reattach it all together with the M5 screws. You'll need the M5 nuts from the old extruder body for the M5 screws to screw into. Place them in the hexagonal holes as you screw the screws in. Once those screws are tight, it's time to reattach the fan with the two M3 screws we previously removed. And now it's a flex extruder V2. Let's reattach it to the machine with the M3 screw. And then, making sure the machine is still off and unplugged, reattach the wiring harness. Next, warm up the nozzle and feed in some flexible filament. It works! Before attempting to print, don't forget to re-level your Z-stop, as the new extruder head might sit higher or lower than before and you don't want to accidentally damage your print bed. Also, optionally, you can flash FlexiStruder-specific firmware to the machine via Cura. I'll leave that part up to you.